The first, the very first election partner of ABS was Inquirer. Inquirer. Uh -oh. So I, I was remember. a cub reporter. Uh oh. This one, it's really almost an epiphany mm. uh, moment. I remember I was down galing sa parking. Then parang dito, di ba? May, there's mm -hmm. a long mm -hmm. walk down yeah. there na ano. Then Ted Filon mm. comes out mm -hmm. in a suit. I'd never seen him in, in person. person. Oh. Matangkad, di ba? Matangkad, yeah. matikas. He's tall, dark. Oo. Oh. Oh, oh. Alam mo talaga yung image niya, parang, ay, pintikas na itong taong. Iba yung, di ba? May dating there was, siya. There was, oh, may dating. There was a real glow yeah. uh, to him. And maybe at that time, he wasn't even that big. He wasn't even big. Paano pa, paakit pa, na? Pa, pa, Kasi may pa pa ano na, na hoy gising nun. Baka nag-hoy gising, eh. gising yeah. days nun. ABS-CBN was quite good at spotting that kind of aura in people. Uh -huh. And I must say, I somehow, you know, somehow rubbed off on me. It will, it will eventually rub off on people who work there. Uh -huh. There's some kind of... But how do you spot know. that aura for... Ano? Ito, ito ang thing. Ah. Um, uh -huh. You came from radio. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Ted Filon. Mm -hmm. Also came from radio. Uh, Kabayan. Yes. Diba? Came from, from radio. A lot of people came up mm -hmm. over, over but radio. But I was behind the scenes oh, oh, oh. in my radio oh, experience. But how do you make, ang point ka lang is when you say when you spot people. Mm -hmm. How do you make that connection na? Oh, ito, magaling to sa radio, pero pan TV to. Actually, in the early days, uh, there was this kind of um, bias ah. that radio people won't be good enough for TV, mm -hmm. right? Uh -huh. Until Freddy Garcia gambled on Noli De Castro mm -hmm. and thought that he'd be a good news news anchor for uh -huh. TV Patrol. Uh -huh. So, doon na nag-umpisa yung you don't have to be uh, Hariga. classically good-looking. Uh -huh. uh -huh. You don't have to be uh -huh. uh, super eloquent mm. or sobrang magaling, very articulate. Uh, natutulungan eh. Mm. I, I, what I learned is you can help a person as long as he has the potential, he or she has potential, you can prop them up. Mm. You can give them uh, the vehicle mm. no, to harness that potential and turn it into something mm. big. Yeah, but like there must Noli, be... Ted, Corina. Mm. Mike Enriquez Mike also Enriquez, came from... Mike uh, Enriquez, Mel Tianco, mm. hindi ba? Mm. And so many other talents. Uh, Look, Jessica Soho is uh, such a mm. credible news presenter who had her beginnings as a reporter, as a, as a mm. journalist, mm. hindi ba? But she's... Uh, high up there with all the other uh -huh. broadcast uh, kasi, icons uh, and, and that also came up during a time when, uh, during our time, I think that's safe to say, <laughs> during our time, <laughs> mm -hmm. among other things, I, you're talking about when you say classical anchors, during our time it was Harry Gasser, mm, Frankie Evangelista, Frankie Evangelista, di ba? Uh, Bong Lapira, Bong Lapira. Di ba? Yes. yung and, deep voice, di ba? yung baritone, uh -huh. si Angelo Castro, is in that belongs to that mode, yes. belonged to that yes uh, but mode. also the, the however mm -hmm. people put their finger on that the other mm -hmm. thing was it used to be english true there, there was um, i remember uh kabayan really marked that time when suddenly abs cbn shifted to prime time news in filipino, filipino. yes diba? mm -hmm. and i know that was jarring for a lot of people but I think there's a connection there also, diba, with with what you have to build on from people coming from AM radio mm -hmm. and making that connection to this is going to be not only the face, not only the voice, but even the language mm -hmm. of of primetime news. I think it was at that time a combination of uh, voice. Uh, simpatico looks, mm. not necessarily handsome, but mm. you know, uh, malamig sa mata ng mm. audience, mm. kung baga. Mm. And uh, 
some knowledge and some experience in actual journalism. Mm. Yung, mm. Yun yung combination. You're not eh. just a news reader. Yeah, you're talking Kung baga nagtatrabaho ka talaga. Mm-hmm. No? Alam mm-hmm. mo yung sinasabi mo. Uh-huh. And, and um, you know, i- dumaan ka doon. You know, you, you have, you earned your stripes. Kung baga. Mm. Ikaw, what was your vision for yourself nung nag-media ka? You know, nung nag-media ako, actually, I was... Teka mo na, before anything mm. else. First and only mo ba ang ABS-CBN? First serious job. And and yeah, I was a lifer since okay. then on. Ah. Since since 1986. Hmm. So I started, actually, funny story. I I was just doing odd jobs at that time. I dropped out of the university because I became a mother. At uh, nag, nag-AWOL ako. Hmm. No? So... May, may side story din yan later mm. on. University was? The UP. UP. Biliman. Mm. So, I was uh, studying broadcast communication at IMC pa noon. Mm. And... Um, okay, ni Luchi? Nauna siya sa akin. Ah. Oo, and Lauren too, nauna <clears throat> sila sa akin. Um, so, I became a mother and I had to, to stop studying. And at that time, I was just, uh, you know, parang aimless. I was just looking for a job. So I would be a technical writer for a few months mm. for a, for a, alam mo ba yung nasida nung araw? Yes. Mm. I knew someone whose mom worked there mm. and I was recommended to write, you know, stuff. Parang ah. releases nila. So that's how I began. So I said, oh, this is good. I, I like doing this. And then I had to quit that because that wasn't, or or the job wasn't really long term. Mm, project lang. Project, oh, project, project, lang. project mm. lang. And then I, uh, somebody was nice enough to refer me to somebody in DZRJ at that time because they were starting to build a, a programming grid that had magazine shows. Yeah. Aside from the usual, you know, music uh, uh, work. Because this was this was this post nineteen eighty six. Oh, post and Edsa. RJ so, had this yeah. moment. Uh, R- uh, yeah, Rajo uh, Bandido siya nun, yeah, di ba? Uh, and then I went there. Uh, I was interviewed by Angelo Castro Jr., who was hmm? a, I don't know what he was at. <laughs> di ko na maalala ngayon, but parang he was a uh, either the station manager or the head of programming there. And he said, so why do you want to work, blah, blah, blah. And I said, yeah, I want to learn. I wanted to be in radio because, you know, I, 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 my studies were cut short because mm. of personal issues. And he said, okay. Nag, ano ako do? Nag, nag-umpisa ako as production assistant. And then eventually I was producing his show. It was a magazine show, like two hour long and kung mm-hmm. ano-anong segments. We were experimenting. It was an exciting time. Okay? And you knew what that meant when they said you will produce this show? Yeah. You knew uh, what that yeah. meant? Yeah. May, may konting idea <clears throat> naman ako because mm. I, I uh, <laughs> you know, attended production classes in college. Mm. No matter how limited that was, I had some idea what, what that, but, but that was, I was so raw. No? I was so raw and Angelo at that time was uh, very creative, but but he wasn't a journalist either. So, nangangapa lang kaming lahat. And then, after a few months, uh, we were also restless, me and some of my, my friends who were working there, because we, we hadn't really been paid yet as employees, <laughs> di ba? Parang, ano to, wala time. Wala pa ta- hindi pa natin alam ang sweldo natin. Mm. We were just given parang transportation allowance at that time. Mm. Years later... So, naman, may, may trabaho ka na, gusto mo pa ng oh, sweldo. <laughs> years later, <laughs> when I talked to Ramon Jacinto, I asked, I, I, I reminded him of, of that. You know, you still owe me money, ha? <laughs> <laughs> ano sabi niya? Natawa siya, no? Natawa siya. But you know, sabi niya, uh, alma mater mo ang DZRJ ha wag mong kakalimutan yan may ganun siya there was a time we were ah. we were in touch that was a, a short while that was before Duterte mm. uh, announced his run and I knew that he was gonna run because Ramon Jacinto for some reason contacted me because we had someone in common we knew somebody in, in Angelo Castro and he wanted me to pursue uh, uh, the, the the potential run 
of Rodrigo Duterte at a time when he wasn't even ah, doing radar, yeah. those road shows. Uh, hindi pa confirmed. Hindi mm. pa. Mm. Oo. So, pinapatunugan ko na yun sa mga reporters ko because of that. But, yeah, that was my history with RJ. It was a few months, unpaid. Mm. Uh, but I, I learned, I met people there. And then it was Angelo who brought you over to India. Yes, he said, uh, guys, I am leaving DCRJ. I have an offer to be a news manager in ABS-CBN, which is reopening because the Lopez's mm. are back, blah, 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 blah. If you might want to join me. Mm. So there were two of us who actually said, yes, we'd love to join you. We'd love to go there. Mm. We'd love to work for TV. And you were always on the production side? Mm -hmm. Yes. You were never a talent in no, front of the no, camera, no. behind I was the never, microphone? I was never confident enough to be in front of the camera. So I was always afraid. And, and I had this self-conscious uh, notion that I wasn't good looking enough for, mm. for the camera, that, mm. that my voice was bad. And that I'd freeze, no, when when yeah. asked to do anything in front of, of a camera. Yeah, now I, I I know what you mean. I think actually, bigla ko lang na isip. We know so many people in media, mm -hmm. We know so many people, um, not just people in front of the camera, but we know a lot of really good people who, like you, never actually was behind the mic, mm -hmm. was never actually in front of the camera. But when you think about Dahil ganun yung stereotype na kailangan, di ba? May mm, tipo ka, uh -oh. dapat, dapat may itsura ka, dapat yeah. may, ano. Can you imagine how many people you know na if we didn't have that baggage, ang daming magagaling na journalists sana. I know. Na, that we held back. That we're held back or limited mm. by those stereotypes and, and by, you know, I, I guess dictates of, of the industry at that time. I, I myself was guilty of that for a time. Kasi kapag pangit ang boses, naiinis ako. I was a producer of a newscast. Mm. I produced The World Tonight. Mm -hmm. And I hated it when the reporter's diction was yeah. below par. Mm. Diba? Naiinis ako when the writing was so bad. And, and I would really assign it, that, that, that script to, to one mm. of our writers or producers, right? But sometimes, I would work on the stories myself and I would really mangle the script and rewrite it from scratch. Uh -huh. So may bias din akong ganon dun sa yung magaling mag English, okay. yung maganda ang diction. Mm. But I also learned that I had to appreciate, you know, my colleagues for their own strengths. Yeah. And I, I which resolved. Is, which is actual knowledge. Which is, is actual, actual knowledge. Uh, actual, you know, and, and because of that, no, my awakening was such that I learned to appreciate some of the more, you know, some of the reporters who were more uh, present in TV Patrol. Hmm. I learned to appreciate their style, their news gathering uh, strengths, hmm. their ability to network. Hmm and their ability to talk to anyone. Yes. So, in as much as I contributed uh, to this craft or to this industry, I also really learned so much from it. And yeah. for that, I will be forever grateful. And I, I remember when my time came to face the camera, mm. and this started when I became bureau chief ah. of ABS-CBN, and I was based in the States. Mag-isa lang ako eh. Wala akong, well, hindi naman mag-isa, no? I had, but I had like very few people to help me. And uh, I had to do the news gathering myself. I had to produce it and, and send it to Manila and produce another version for airing in uh, TFC territories, mm. no? So natuto rin ako mag-on-cam. Mm. Natuto ako mag-makeup. Nagpaturo ako sa mga makeup artists <laughs> namin sa studio. I even had to ask, anong bibilin ko? Ano kailangan ng meron ako palagi? Mm. Yung mga ganon. Mm. And, and I remember, and um, you know, my colleagues were very helpful. Uh, Corina Sanchez, for one, told me, uh, medyo stiff ka pa mag-report eh, kasi syempre bago ka na. Uh. I, sabi ko, you know, Corina, it's not like you. Uh. Right? To you, this comes naturally. But, I'm always self-conscious, even if it's a radio report, no? So sabi niya, mag-report ka palagi. Uh, I-timing mo, 
yung radio hour namin ni Ted and mahahasa ka dyan. Hmm. So, that gave me, uh, I guess, some exposure yeah. and, and that experience helped uh, ease my, my nerves. Ah. And, and made me a little bit more confident in live reporting, which, you, which came in handy during those years that I was really covering important U.S. and Philippine issues from, from the U.S. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, did you ever picture yourself being an executive? In, in there? No, no. Actually, you know. And how do you end up? How do you, <laughs> how do you end up one day just waking up and I'm sure this happened, di ba? Mm -hmm. you, wa you wake up one day and then you actually do realize na, oh nga no, ako yung boss. Yeah, uh, actually, I never thought I'd be the head of news or be part of the executive committee of a company like ABS-CBN because I've always been uncomfortable in, in, in that world, mm. you know? I've never been comfortable in the boardroom. The newsroom was my world. Uh, and from time to time, the field. Because as producer, I would also be part of, you know, mm. news gathering in the field. And, and that was, I was very much at home there. I had to learn, when I was in the States, by the way, that was when I learned to be more tolerant of non-news people. You probably are aware that we in news are always at odds with people in sales, mm. finance, HR, etc., etc. But when I was there and I was looking at things, no, from a little bit from the outside of the main of the main uh, of the main mothership, team. that was when I learned to to really. Um, Take, that was when I learned to really appreciate mm. the work of those support staff. No, because it's it's easy for us to uh, just say, "Hindi mo naman alam ang operations namin eh, kaya ganyan kayo." We, I can't stand HR. I can't stand finance. Mm. Always limiting our moves, etc. Always mm. giving us uh, little money mm. when our needs are this big. Blah mm. blah blah, de ba? But I guess that centered me that experience because working with people that ran TFC was very eye-opening for me in the sense that uh, konti lang ang tao nila doon. Yeah. You know, you, you multitask, you do everything. There was no production assistant to see rock scripts for me. Uh, I would preview everything. I would cue my sound bites. I'd, I'd, kulang nalang mag-e-edit ako mismo ng sarili kong trabaho, but I also instituted that practice, yeah. by the yeah. way. I was the one who started this video journalist concept in, in the States. Mm. I assigned one reporter to LA because there were a lot of Filipinos there and, and I, that, at that time, I think we were not covering them as much as we needed to. And so I said, you go there, you relocate there, we'll, we'll fund your relocation, but what happens is you live there, you cover news, you edit yourself, we'll, we, well, rough cut at least, mm. and send everything to, to San Francisco. So that's what happened. And that's still in practice up to now. Mm. All of this sounds so happy. Uh, and I'm sure we could go on. Mm -hmm. uh, but you literally just came back from the U.S., mm -hmm. recharged. I anyway, took some recharging, di ba? Yeah. Uh, it's been a year. It's been a year. Kaya nga, Since diba? I retired. Exactly. First, let me let me get to segue to my next phase of questions with this. With this no? As happy as those early days were, mm -hmm. you also presided over really very tumultuous and very traumatic days for ABS-CBN, if not for the entire Philippine media uh, sector. So, tanong ko muna. You mm. just came back literally a few days ago. Mm -hmm. diba? True. After a few months. How badly did you need that break? <laughs> <sighs> Honestly, Robbie, I don't know how I survived the last three years. My mom got very sick and died. 
and before that she was at my house at my home as a as a palliative patient mm. no, for a couple of years and then uh, within the six months of that my husband also passed away and then we were dealing with covid and and the shutdown the franchise crisis as mm. i call it um i i i just felt this huge uh, weight that was uh, lifted after I left in 2022. Mm. Uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't complete. I still feel for my colleagues who are there mm. and, and it, it's, um, you said it was tumultuous and traumatic. I think it was it was life changing. It literally changed and and lives for worse for uh, thousands of people. Ang pinagdaanan ng ABS-CBN and the newsroom in particular was like was the hardest the most uh, challenging, the most uh, traumatizing period, the most, w I mean, what an experience. Mm. And before that, hindi lang yan eh. It was a build up, Robbie, because as you know, we were subjected to the president's attacks, verbal mm. attacks. Mm. This is president That attack, was yeah. regular, yeah. That regularly uh, was... <laughs> punctuated, shall we say, his press cons, his yeah. speeches. And and there was a point when we just didn't want to monitor him anymore. Mm. S me and, and some of the officers. Mm. We couldn't stand it anymore. We were so uh, exhausted and dra emotionally drained mm. whenever we listened to him attack our mm. company, curse our owner, mm. and just, you know, uh, malign all of us. Inisip ko nga noong mga panahon na yun, paano pa yung reporter ko na nandun mismo sa harap niya? And, and that was really, I, I, I am trying to write about this, you know, and I, I, always stop at some point because it's so ang term ng mga Gen Z dyan, it's so triggering di ba? Yeah. so triggering yeah, I'm triggering that's mm -hmm. I have a moment mm -hmm. uh, like that I'm not comparing anything that I've experienced to what ABS-CBN mm -hmm. and other reporters out in the field from all media yeah. companies mm -hmm. um, so many colleagues of ours had to had to face it di ba? Parang, um, I remember even Rafi Tima feeding for, for mm -hmm. Rafi. And I was mm -hmm. I used to make him an example of, you know, mm -hmm. look at that. Parang kaya niya harapin yan. Mm -hmm. But Rafi is not just looking out for himself. He's not just even just looking out for his colleagues. He's looking out for his wife. You, know, you, you never know if suddenly Duterte turns on and says something, you know, mm -hmm. beneath all of, all of us or any decent mm -hmm. person. But I remember... Uh, I don't know, President Marcos na, just a few months ago, and the Duterte was on SMNI. Mm. And he was on the news because of something he said on SMNI. And then so we, I remember this soundbite came up. You know? And then during the break, I remember turning to Gretchen and I said, oh my God, nakalimutan ko na to. Mm. I mean, I at that moment, I think I felt I understood the word triggered. Na, mm. oh nga, no, we were doing this every day, every hour for six years, and the trigger, the feeling triggered in me was the feeling of of helplessness. Now, what am I supposed to do when he says something that's obviously inane? Mm -hmm. that obviously on its own is not even supposed to be newsworthy mm -hmm. but just because he's president we have to give it airtime 
And even though we all know it's not true, or it's inane, or it's just damaging uh, for the sake of being damaging, mm -hmm. and it's libelous, you know, and it's misogynistic, but just because of that, you have to air it. Diba? And you just feel like, what Look, am I doing? What are we I all was, doing I, here? I was so conflicted about that. Mm. And then, dumating yung panahon na sinabi na namin, huwag na natin i-carry yan sa ANC kasi may mga iba pa namang mas newsworthy. So, that happened. No? Pero, it couldn't be avoided. Hmm. SONA! How could you not air the SONA? What about the congressional hearings? Because the congressional hearings, the franchise hearings, was hmm. in fact specifically about you. What kind of marching order Hmm. Do you give people, knowing hmm. among other things, that not only Carlo Katigbak, hmm. but you yourself are going to be a resource person. True. You know you're going to be getting um, language and lines of questioning that are unreasonable. Before you leave the office, the hmm. studio, and hmm. the newsroom to go to the... What kind of marching order do you give people? Well, first of all, when, um, when my turn came, that was the last of the hearings. There were 11 other hearings, or maybe 10, before me. And, and uh, the instruction I gave to, to the journalists of ABS-CBN was that just cover it factually, as dispassionately as you could. Mm. Yun ang marching orders ko. Wag kayong maging emotional dito. We have to cover it like any other news event. Of course, we have to be conscious that it's about us. Uh, but it can't be just us. You can't just to take the sound bites of Mr. Katigbak or Mr. Lopez or myself, no? We have to give airtime to these Congress people mm. asking questions no matter how, you know, mm. inane or sometimes uh, they were really, they were really not just critical, they were uh, insulting and offensive, mm. right? So, wala, ganun. We had to be, wow, I hate the word, objective yeah. about all of that. Mm. You, you must obviously know a lot more um, uh, than most people about what, what went on. You know a lot more um, uh, behind the scenes and off the record stuff, mm. Mm. Between government <clears throat> the politicians and the Lopez's and ABS-CBN. But from an outsider, even as a media practitioner, one of the things that I always, I knew I was, I, I knew I believed it. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I think, explicitly told people, na non-media, di ba? Pagka nakikimarit mm -hmm. ka sila, ano ba ang mangyayari? Yeah. Yeah. I sincerely believe na hindi mangyayari yan. ABS-CBN mm -hmm. is too big to to do this too. And this also crosses a line, mm -hmm. not just with politics and, and media, but with the establishment. Diba? However sure. you define it. Diba? Parang, totoo naman eh. Mm -hmm. diba? Politics mm -hmm. and private interests are inevitably bedfellows in more ways than one. True. That's, um, the, reality and then, and that's our, the reality of our And that's the reality of our society, oh. not just of yes. media. And yes. therefore, I sincerely believe na hindi mangyayari yan. Mm -hmm. Diba? And until it happened, until, not even the day, until the hour that it happened, until the vote mm -hmm. happened, I would not have believed it. But did you, in fact, see it coming? Did you? I did. Yeah? You know why? If it were any other president, wedding ABS-CBN was too big to fail or to shut down, maaring mangyari yung ganung scenario. And it probably already did. Yeah. In past in administrations. Past oh. administrations. But this was Duterte. And Mr. Duterte was something else. He, we totally didn't expect that kind of uh shall I say reign or rule. He wanted to be a strong man. He wanted to dictate to us. And he could have if he had gotten away with it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 
I don't know. It, I prob we probably should give a little credit to media and to civil society for not allowing that to happen in spite of mm. what we all allowed to happen, mm. right? Wala pa, think, tayo sa, it, wala pa tayo sa drug war uh, niyan, di ba? Yeah. You think but, we allowed it to happen? I mean, yeah. do you, you think we did society not, we did not allowed do it enough? To, we didn't do enough. We, you think we were cowed? You think we were genuinely We were all afraid? cowed. And, and I don't blame anyone. I don't blame my fellow media practitioners and fellow journalists. Mm. I don't blame big business. It's just the reality. Our society, look at, at the history of our country. It's always been like this. The business interests and the political interests are always intertwined, have always been, and that cycle just goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. You think that the whole congressional franchise system for for broadcasting, I mean, taking it out now. That's a whole politics. conflict of interest yeah, I, I there, Robbie, exactly, right? But that's my point. Mm -hmm. Parang, and it's also meant to take it away from just the personality of, of Duterte. Diba? Exactly. But the fact is that <clears throat> is still the reality. Diba? And that is hanging over the heads, literally, of the most powerful and arguably still most important media in, in the Philippines, diba? the media networks, and so on. The reality is, for the longest time, it's, uh, it's not just because of Duterte. All past administrations, it's a legacy of probably even the American era, that you need congressional franchise to operate. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why congressional is there in that term. Uh, diba? Kasi... Well, if because you're saying you have models it's, that it's not. There are models right? where, like, the Federal Co FAA. Communications Commission, mm, FCC, yeah. FCC uh. is the one in charge of that. So maybe it's time we rethought this whole process, yeah. right? It's time we uh, looked at the possibility of having an independent, credible, uh, professionally run, uh, you know, and by that I mean industry experts in charge of our own version of mm -hmm. the FCC. Mm -hmm. diba? Kasi conflict of interest, kasi palaging mangyayari na pag may napikon sa'yo na politiko, sasabihin nila, sa kagad na sasabihin sa'yo, franchise, di ba? Mm -hmm. Or, palagi rin na kapag kailangan mo ng franchise, eh, you're at the mercy yeah. of that committee. That's what's happening with SMNI now. Yeah, I've heard about yeah, it. Huh. I, I didn't see the hearings, just uh, portions of it. And I know that it's been the talk of the town huh. for some time now. Because it's for me, you know, regardless of what you think of SMNI mm -hmm. and Badoy and, and Celis, and I probably mm -hmm. side with you on your opinions of these, of these people, but the, as I the test of whether or not Congress is on your side Mm -hmm. or is actually fighting for the values that we want, which is independent media, or for that matter, against red tape and mm -hmm. uh, red, red, red tagging, mm -hmm. and so on. It's actually one way to test ano ba talaga yung pinaglalaban dito is to replace the, replace the company involved. Put in any other company, company yeah. mm -hmm. and see if you would think na, if you would cheer that on. Diba? I'm not I'm not cheering that on by yeah. the way uh. Uh, I've been there uh, we've been through that uh, actually to me it was the trial of ABS CBN it wasn't just a franchise hearing come on mm. let's be candid about that but <laughs> what they're doing now is dangerous to mm. But it's uh, the same weapon, di ba? Yun yung point. The, yeah. It's the same mechanism. It's the same, it's the same process. It's the same uh, right of Congress. It's being weaponized to mm. run after mm. uh, hosts mm. that are critical of certain politicians, certain political leaders. Yeah. Ang prinsipyo natin dyan, Robbie, is that any attempt to close, shut down, suspend the broadcast of a news organization or in the case of SMNI, a 
program, hmm. whether it's extremely partisan or not, hmm. is an infringement on our free freedom, hmm. on our press freedom. Yeah, you know? my, well, or my take on that is, you know, when people ask me, but isn't that in fact a press freedom issue, or isn't that in fact something that, uh, sabi ko, whatever, uh, whether hmm. you want to look at it as Mm. Hindi, libelous naman talaga magsalita yung mga yan or nagre-retag mm. naman talaga yung mga mm. yan. My take on it is, no, but take them to court. Yes. I would want mm. these challenges and these cases to be made in court. The danger is in all of us now accepting Congress as a court of resort for what is fair and what should be allowed to, to air. And I think that's what people, yeah. ano, diba? parang, yeah. it's and an, unsy- it's a, diba? yes. let's face it, it's an unsympathetic um, platform uh, 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 or, and, and, or, and client right oh, now. Oh, diba? Siguro, oh. But that's the reality. You replace SMNI with any other news company, and it Network, becomes, yes. it's, it's, it's much easier to illustrate mm-hmm. the principles and the risks at stake yes. here. Because if the issue ay, did they did they report or did they broadcast a lie? Mm. Did they deliberately lie about mm. this this travel budget? Mm. Okay? Then you you focus on that. Yeah. Di ba? Doon, doon ka lang. <coughs> Bakit yung buong franchise na ang mm. idadamay yeah. natin? Di habla mo. Di ba? Pwede naman eh. Yun, yun, yung, yun yung sa akin. Mm. And you know, hindi ko sila kilala as I said and wala akong balak manood sa kanilang channel but you know, wag, wag naman nating simulan ito na naman. Yun pala, may tanong ako But before that, because I haven't introduced you yet, I'm speaking of course to Jing Reyes, uh, former head of ABS-CBN News, yes. uh, fresh back from the United States after practically one year of uh, <laughs> taking a well-deserved break, mm-hmm. I, I have to say. Thank you. Mm. Thanks for having me. I was surprised to get a call asking me to guest <laughs> in your show. I said, uh, what am I going to talk about? I'm a former something. I'm uh, a nobody now. But the former, <laughs> but the title of former something mm-hmm. affords you some privilege of being able to speak now, <laughs> diba? <laughs> some. Ah, yeah. sige, sige. <laughs> how, how different do you speak now? Because I really appreciate how you're speaking now. Oh my God, but, but, I'm so... But, 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 <laughs> But how 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 different would you say I found you, my voice, you, 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 you speak mean? now <laughs> versus to how you were yeah two three years ago? Well, and how does it feel? Well, it's very liberating, of course, and and uh, but but I must confess, Robbie, that you know um, first we were all journalists. I was a reporter for a time too, and then I was the head of this massive organization, right? And I had to lead by example. I couldn't even tweet about my opinion mm. at that time. And up to now, hindi ko rin yan masyadong ginagawa. I'm not so mm. active on social media. And, and um, yun na nga eh, parang naisip ko, nasa na yung aking boses? Parang yeah. ano na ba ang pwede kong sabihin? Uh, I held back. I held back a lot. Mm-hmm when I was uh, news chief, and, and for obvious reasons. Alam naman natin yan, di ba? Uh, hindi pwedeng yung opinion mo masyadong ipinapaalam mo, di ba? Eh, baka sabihin ng lahat, eh, bias naman pala yung, nah. yung head of news ninyo mm-hmm. at ganyan ang mga pinagsasasabihin, di ba? So, maingat lang tayo noon. But of course, I knew myself and I knew what I stood for. I have always been vocal. How, about, how big a price is that to pay and how hard is that a price to keep your whole life as a journalist and then you constantly having to remind yourself na uh, I actually have to well let's face it I have to censor myself mm-hmm. yeah yeah how difficult is that oh it was you know it was physically difficult because there was a time when we were going through this whole mess right through this crisis I would get headaches so much that my husband who was alive at that time was so worried because it was throbbing, mm. pulsating headache. I was so afraid that I even went to get an MRI. I, I got a referral for a 
mm. uh, neuro mm. expert, no? Na talagang akala ko meron na akong terminal illness or something, but apparently it was tension headache. Kailangan ka lang pala. Which I do not get now, okay? <laughs> so, kailangan mo lang pala sumigaw. I know. <laughs> so, I was... In, it, it, and it would happen during meetings. It would happen during, uh, you know, maybe arguments with somebody. Naramdaman ko yun. There was a physical toll. And, uh, yeah, that was the price I paid. And, and... I, I also had to swallow a lot of embarrassment mm. during that time. Mm. You uh, also have to front for fears of a lot of people. I mean, I'm not mm. like you. I don't blame anyone. Mm -hmm. But like you also, I, I believe we were all cowed. We were all afraid for one way or the, one way or mm -hmm. the other. Mm -hmm. And we were also, also on many levels afraid, if not for ourselves, for other people. Sure. Diba? In your yes. case, it was literally thousands of jobs. Mm -hmm. na, you know, I, hindi lang ako pwede magmatapang dito because tomorrow it's about 11,000 yes. jobs. Diba? But it, it was that. It was not just your own fears. Exactly. Yes. You had to front for the fears of a lot of people. Totoo yan. At saka, yan din yung naging uh, palagi naming binabalikan, ano? In, in ABS that paano na yung paano na tong mga tao na to. Mm. And then that still happened if you remember. So I remember August, the end of August. That was when in did 2020 get, when we when we let go of thousands of people. Did, did you ever get any kind of now you feel free to be as open about as possible, mm -hmm. but did you ever get any in those days that we didn't believe na hindi naman siguro aabot doon. Mm -hmm. Hindi naman siguro itutuluyan. Mm -hmm. But did you ever get any kind of suggestion or hint mm -hmm. or prodding na, I don't know, mag, mag sorry lang kayo. Magpakumbaba lang kayo. Lilipas din to. Mangy parang, in other words, heard, did you, I, act, I, I did did you actually have a glimmer of, mm -hmm. look, here's the way out. Mahirap man lunukin, there is a way out. You just need to do this. I, I don't think I heard someone say to anyone that there is a way out. It was just always, we'll see. Uh, wow. There should be something. We'll see. Uh, maybe you get an audience with the president. Hmm. Mga ganon. Um, pero... Ganito lang ang gawin ninyo para matuwa ang Pangulo sa inyo. Ah, Walang ah. ganun. Uh, yeah, there was, that door was closed. I, I, don't, I don't think, I, I mean, as media people, and as you were once also an officer, hmm. right? Hmm. In, your comp, in your media company. Alam naman natin that they do back channeling, di ba? Hmm. Nang, hmm. Nangyayari yan exactly. eh, dito pa sa Pilipinas. Yun yung point ko, di ba? Mm -hmm. Sa back channeling. Mm -hmm. Meron bang ganun? Pero walang naging, wala akong nakita o naramdaman na may pag-asa. Oh, talaga. Wala akong nakita. Wala akong naramdaman. Kasi wala akong nalaman ask, na may pag-asa. The reason I ask mm -hmm. is it could have gone either way. Knowing me, ah, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm talking about my personality. Mm -hmm. If there was a hint mm -hmm. na, alam mo, ganito lang Huwag ka lang mayabang, parang magpakumbaba ka lang. Mm. And to be fair, I think everybody, Carlo Katigbak, everybody, nagpakumbaba. Di ba? You kept your head slow, mm. magalang yung sagot mm. nyo. Pero doon pa rin napunta. Oh. But it's one thing kung sinabihan kayo, magpakumbaba lang kayo, lilipas din to. Huwag kayo mag-alala. Di ba? Then I could have behaved. But knowing my personality and knowing how I think, the risk with me, with somebody like me, I think is, if I didn't get that assurance, and if, in other words, if the message was, kahit gaano ka magpakat, magpakumbaba dyan, mm -mm. dun din ang mm -mm. punta niyan. Mm -mm. Dun, sa, mm -mm. sa libingan din ang tuloy ng uh -oh. position. <laughs> then you could have flipped a switch and you could have said, ay kung ganun lang pala, di bastusan na to. Mm -hmm. Di ba? E kung, kung wala rin pa, kung, if I'm not getting any kind of assurance that there's a quid pro quo here, I could play that game. But the thing is, I also suspected that 
There were a lot of people. In other words, but ang, bakit ang bait-bait nyo? Nung, nung, kung uh, alam think, mo na na... I think we were put on a short leash that whole time. Yeah. Right? I, so... I know some colleagues of yours. Mm. Because I talk to, mm. to them. And I, you know, we talk about, oh, project tayo, gawin natin to, mm. and so on. But I know some colleagues of yours who... Uh, I've spoken to at least two and... But actually, I, I've spoken to at least... Who were holding back? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about after na. Ah, uh, after. Okay. Ito, this whole time na nakasaba, naka, na, nagbabakasyon ka na and so on. Who then come back to me and say na, akala ko ready na ako, hindi pala. Ready na? na? To, to get back to journalism. Okay, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's PTSD. At the end of the day, may iniinda pa pala ako. Mm. Mabigat pa pala to sa... Mabigat siya talaga, Robbie. Uh, and I saw several of the people who used to work for me leave media. not just the company, but new, the news media altogether. They're all in the corporate offices now. Yeah. Malungkot. I know a lot of Malungkot. young people oh. na ganyan din, di ba? And sabi nila sa akin, Ma'am, hindi ko na kaya yung trauma araw-araw. Uh, and then this whole, at the time, no, ABS-CBN's uh, status was uncertain a lot of a lot of us should go to counseling uh -huh. actually hindi natin sinasabi o inaamin to sa mga sarili natin but we have a shared trauma mm -hmm. so how do you spend iba, your iba one iba lang ang ang degree niya no? so how do you spend your one year believe it or not i enrolled in a course a couple of courses, actually, uh, because I wanted to find out if I can deal with challenges that were not within ABS or that weren't about ABS. Mm. I also took a writing course because I was having a hard time finding my voice, finding my own voice, writing with my own, you know, voice and, and and really dealing with with my whole reality hmm. 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 so what, i did that and what are you going to do are you are you just are you going to be writing are you going to I be i probably will be right continue writing i'll i'll do more long form writing i sort of experimented uh with my writing about my grief uh recently hmm. so that was very personal though. So, iba naman yung, you know, other parts mm. of, of my journey, of course. I will also, I would also like to devote my time mentoring and teaching young journalists and media people. Mm. You know, my discovery was that uh, in our region, in Asia, not a lot of women are given leadership posts. Mm decision-making roles in newsrooms. So I'd like to help with that. I'd like to be able to contribute to, um, you know, at least elevating more women in media organizations, not just in the Philippines, because here, alam natin, malakas ang mga babae dito sa atin. Hmm. But in other parts of the world, hindi pa ganyan. Oh, sige, teka muna, uh, Jing. Sure. Unfortunately, our listeners know by this time, we hmm. only have, 50 minutes to one hour for, for uh, the show. whole show is mm. one hour. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, mm. busa na naman po tayo ng mm. oras. Again, I'd like to thank Jing Reyes, former uh, head of ABS-CBN News. May wine pa kami, so tuloy lang ang kwento uh -huh. namin. I will have this privilege of continuing mm. this, but you will have to leave us. Please catch us again next Thursday, 9 p.m. Manila time on One News. You can also check out The Long Conversation on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Google Podcast. Ako po si Robbie Alampay. This is Roundtable and you can also follow this. We will upload the audio on Puma Podcast mm -hmm. uh, in pure audio mm -hmm. form. My own personal cut of this ah, long conversation. Oh, that's nice. So you can find it also on Puma Podcast. Again, ako po si Robbie Alampay. This is Roundtable. Maraming salamat po.